welcome to the fourth installment of the Field Investigator's Backpack. This is a series of Field Investigator training videos that highlights one category of equipment or preparation at a time in order to stimulate thinking and planning about what might go on in a field investigation. This is to foster better planning and smoother, safer operations. So far, we've been a little abstract talking about planning and kidding. So this time, let's talk about something very concrete, flashlights, or more generally, battery powered lights. I don't mean to insult your intelligence. I'm sure you have some experience with flashlights and have some idea of what is useful to you. But flashlights have changed a lot over recent decades, and it might be useful to review some of the options in light of what we are trying to accomplish. On the practical side, I want you to carry the illumination you will need, but not spend any more money than absolutely necessary. The truth is, you don't need to spend much at all. But let's begin at the beginning. Around the home and workshop, sometimes a really bright flashlight is useful. It can illuminate a large area and help us see what we're doing or find missing cats and so on. However, the field investigator's mission is different. What do we need flashlights for? As I see it, the essential use cases are these. To see what we are doing when the ambient light is inadequate. This could be anything from changing the settings on your camera to writing down notes. Two, to see where we are going at night. Three, to see each other at night. And four, to make it possible to see into places day or night, such as under a porch or inside a shed. For none of these do we need an extremely bright flashlight, and we certainly don't need an expensive or large one. Manufacturers may try to impress you with how many lumens their light can put out. I've seen ads recently for a 90,000 lumen flashlight, but don't be misled into spending extra for that. A few hundred lumens is plenty for our applications, and there are true drawbacks to very bright lights. One, brighter lights must necessarily go through batteries faster. Two, bright lights could quickly ruin the dark adaptation of your eyes, requiring time to recover. Many bright flashlights do offer lower luminosity modes, but make sure it has a mode that is just enough light for close tasks and finding your way around in the dark if you want to buy one. Now, many people use the LED light in their smartphones as a flashlight, and this can work okay, but it draws down the battery on your phone and it is really a mediocre flashlight. If you know you can keep your phone charged and you only need illumination for a short time, then this might be an adequate solution. As always, it's up to you to think through your missions and decide how to equip. However, I have four recommendations I hope you'll consider. One, get a few cheap, simple, single battery, low illumination pen lights and put one into every major kit, including your regular pack or bag. It's best if they all use the same type of battery, preferably AAA, which are easy to find anywhere. These are useful for finding your other gear in the bag, as well as all the other missions we have for a flashlight. Because they are low luminosity, they go through batteries slowly. The one caution is to avoid button batteries. Those are harder to find and harder to change in the dark. Two, get a good, robust, small, weatherproof flashlight that you know how to work and always take it with you. It should have a low luminosity mode, but can also have hot, brighter settings. This is mine. It's small, weatherproof, takes a single AA battery, and has this lovely removable diffusion cap that glows in the dark, making it easy to find in the dark if you drop it. It has a low mode that is very stingy on battery and sufficient to find your way around. Three, get a red flashlight. Some flashlights have both red and white modes, and some have just red. Red light has the advantage that it doesn't affect your night vision as much, and yet it is really easy for other people to see it. 
I have one attached to the back of my sling bag so I can just turn it on and be visible when I want to be, such as when walking down the side of a road or if I want someone to follow me in the dark. Red flashlights are great for sky watching or stargazing. Four, consider getting a red white headlamp. These cost just a little more, but having the hand free is well worth it. You can't direct the light as well as you can with a handheld light, but it's perfectly adequate for most applications. I use headlamps around the house all the time and I take one into the field. I have one made by Princeton Tech, which has a dim and bright red mode and a single brightness white mode. This one is light and small and very comfortable. It also uses AAA batteries in common with much other equipment. Here's a little demo of the headlamp shop on a dark trail through the woods. The most important thing is that you go through the exercise of choosing what illumination you will use, considering what you will use it for. There are better things to spend money on, so go with cheap, small, and simple, and try to minimize the number of spare batteries you'll need to take with you. If you have any questions, we're always available to answer. You can leave a comment below or click the link to contact API that's listed below. You can also send encrypted email to reportaufo at protonmail.com. That's reportaufo at protonmail.com. If you want to see more videos in this series, then please hit like and subscribe below. Also, let us know what you think would be good topics to cover. We hope to see you again soon in the next installment of the Field Investigator's Backpack. is by George Hrob, Occam's Shaving Kit. This video is released under the Creative Commons Attribution License.